Hi there, this is Just Nigeria. Coming up on the program. NSAS protests, we explore victims' journey to justice and plans to reopen the Lekki toll gates. Also, innovative solutions. Nigerian high school students create robots working in hospital wards where coronavirus patients are treated. Plus. Hi guys, my name is KK Bongo Sikwe. Check me out. A movie producer creating wealth and employment opportunities for rural youth and women. Welcome to Just Nigeria from the BBC and Channels TV, where we bring you stories making the rounds on social media. I'm Ajoke Hulotse. Let's kick off with our top story. On October 20, 2020, the army reportedly opened fire on peaceful protesters at Lekki Tollgate in Lagos, weeks after young Nigerians took to the streets to demand an end to police brutality with the hashtag NSAS. The widely acclaimed peaceful protest led trends across the world with calls to bring the perpetrators to justice. To investigate these cases, state governments were mandated to set up judicial panels of inquiry to listen to petitions. But as victims and their families continue to hope for justice, the panel in Lagos announced the handing over of the toll gate venue of the October 20 alleged shooting to its operator following the conclusion of its forensic investigation and a vote of five to four. This angered protesters who called for a new protest to occupy the toll gate. In this report, just Nigeria's Wale Fakile captured on tape how protesters were arrested and explored the journey to justice for victims of the October 20, 2020 shooting. Someone is deep here bleeding. Someone is bleeding in here. Someone is bleeding in here. Let the government know our feelings. We must not lose our right to protest. It's our human rights. Excuse me, sir. What have I done? It's a tale best described as an irony. Protesters who came out to fight perceived injustice, brutalized and battered by the police. They had taken to the streets last year against police abuse, but here they are subjected to more abuse. The lucky target in Nigeria's commercial nerve center is at the heart of this contradiction. In the last quarter of 2020, young Nigerians held a sitting at the gate to call for an end to police brutality. But on the night of October 20th, 2020, bullets and in turn blood poured out. And when the day broke, many hearts and lives were broken. Since then, it's been a long and hard road to justice for victims. It was seen last at the toll gate by my neighbor. So he said he never knew it was going to be like this, else he would have come back home with him. That was the last place he saw him at the toll gate at 4, 4 p.m. that same Tuesday before the shooting began. I went to the hospitals, I saw a lot of people, youths that were injured, some were shot at the shoulder, some at the chest, some at the forehead, but I couldn't find my brother among them. Up to now, I did not see my friend dead body, I did not see anything for my friend. If I go to my house, the family now allow me to rest. If I go anywhere, the family must come. To me. Nigeria police were also not spared from the violence that followed the lucky shooting as 22 officers were killed across the country. The Lagos state government had set up a panel of inquiry to investigate the toll shooting and get justice for victims. After sitting for about three months, the panel voted 5-4 to four to hand over the toll gate to its operator, Lekki Consensual Company, LCC, spurring calls for further protests to demand that justice is served. Those who heeded that call were resisted with force. We were able to catch up with these protesters some meters away from the toll gate as they were scared of getting apprehended. We were not violent. We came here to mourn and to have a peaceful protest because we still have some cases with you guys that are still unfinished. So I think it would be more reasonable for us to first of all finish those pending cases before they reopen the lucky toll gate. Arrested protesters were charged with conspiracy, conduct likely to breach the peace, and violating COVID-19 regulations. This human rights lawyer disagrees with these allegations. The constitution is the way every law must align itself. Any law that is ultra I don't want to be legalistic, any law that 
con you know contradicts the constitution that law is inconsistent and when it is inconsistent it is rendered null and void now on the issue of covid-19 yes covid-19 guidelines and restrictions have been how will i put it they, they they've been they everybody knows about it it's been disseminated but i watched live while some news um, agencies were um were streaming and i didn't see anyone that had that broke that you know that COVID-19 guideline. I saw people arriving and I saw immediately they were arriving, the police picking them up and throwing them, listen carefully, packing them, jam packing them in a van. The police and the Lagos State government have condemned the brutalization. Mr. Biden said it loud and clear that he is not going to be somebody who will have breached the rights of Lagosians. So he is not going to be one who is going to stand by and watch Lagosians being brutalized. He's not going to take that at all. And he has told the Commissioner of Police that. And the Commissioner of Police, I believe, has started the investigation of the matter to see who is guilty, who has done that. It's a big embarrassment, and the state government is against it. If you are arrested on a Friday, you are probably going to end up in police detention or whatever detention till the next week. But we made sure that the court sat late on a Saturday to ensure that people are arrested were released to go home. Reno Dwala, an NSAS campaigner and a former member of the panel, stepped down after the vote to hand over the target back to the LCC. She says justice has not been served and she will not partake in the cover-up. Another member, a Mwadi Burua, threatened to step down after protesters were assaulted at the target on Saturday. All efforts to get comments from other members met a brick wall. So, where do we go from here? We go straight to the courts rather than going to the judicial panel. I know that the government will come up with a, a preliminary objection saying that a judicial panel was um, set up and that judicial panel has not concluded. But that will not hold waters because these people have lost, they, they don't believe in the integrity of the judicial panel. You know? And that is some, some kind of, um, of respite that there is still something that can be done. The NSAS protests might have ended and further demonstrations quashed, but some lives have been changed forever. For friends and families of victims, the road to justice is a tough one, but it's a path they are willing to turn, hoping the journey does not take them down a rabbit hole. My family is worried. Everybody is bothered about it. Wali Fakile, just Nigeria. Now, apart from Debo Adida, you're popularly called Mr. Macaroni, 39 other protesters were arrested by the police on Saturday. Minja Jake was one of them. He joins me in the studio to share his experience. Thank you so much for joining us, Minja. Let me ask you what your experience was like on Saturday. We were protesting peacefully, just chanting, singing, and then the next thing, they grabbed me from behind and threw me inside the um, Black Maria and were driving terribly. I, I don't know if they wanted us to fall inside the van or what, but it was crazy. Then took us to um, Adekunle poli uh, Adeniji police station. When we got to Adeniji, they did all their media paparazzi, took pictures of us, and then um, we, we are not touching them or we are not, I mean, we, but when we got inside, we got the beatings of our life. They beat you? Terribly. The police beat you? Terribly. They, mm. they, they, like, at the point they asked me to keep, take my face up, they kept hitting on my face. Mm. It was a terrible experience. But were law enforcement agencies notified? Were they informed that a protest was going to be taking place at for, that place? For, for them to have been at the two gates with that number, mm. they were aware of the protest. Mm. The police claims that, you know, protesters were violating COVID-19 protocols. We're putting on our marks. Mm. There was no crowd. How many people were there? Well, basically uh, five of us when they arrested us. About five of us. And the COVID-19 rule uh, guideline says not, 50, not more than 50. More than 50. Mm. So we're not even up to 50 people for a start. We're wearing our nose marks. The police people that arrested us had no nose marks. Would you 
ever be out participating in any kind of protest again? Of course. I will always stand up against injustice. Mm -hmm. I will, I'll always lend my voice to speak truth to power. So if you, you had an opportunity to see government face to face, let's, let's say this is the platform, what would you be saying to them right now? Um, you can do better. Mm. Mm. Thank you so much, Manja. Thank, Thank you. you so much for sharing your experience with us. Thank we you appreciate very much. Since freedom of expression and right to peaceful assembly are both enshrined in the Nigerian constitution, how did Saturday's arrest violate these sacred provisions? And what is the implication for democracy? Human rights lawyer and senior advocate of Nigeria, Femi Falano, shares his thoughts. They didn't commit any offense. Uh, in the sense that they were about to gather when they were arrested. And so the question of breaching COVID-19 regulations didn't arise. As a matter of fact, the three can charge against them. There's no basis in law. I think the charges were filed just to legalize, as it were, the unlawful arrest. It is a threat to democracy. And it's a challenge to Nigerians to insist on their rights. And that is the beauty of the out in self that those young men and women were not called to submission by the government. The panel of inquiry was set up to investigate police brutality in the past, and that is ongoing. With respect to the continuation of brutality by the police, the Nigerian people will have to stop the violation of their rights by the police and other security agencies because nobody can be arrested for a civil wrong. Nobody can be arrested in lieu of another person. All these rights are guaranteed by law. But because the majority of Nigerians are not aware of the rights, the police and other law enforcement agencies have continued to take advantage and subject Nigerians to undue harassment. So the duty of the human rights community is how we can enlighten our people and empower them and mobilize them to be able to take on the task of defending and promoting their own human rights. We've already been instructed by some of the protesters to head for court to challenge the gross infringement of their right to protest peacefully against programs or a policy of the government considered inimical to their interests. The law has even now not only recognized the right of Nigerians to protest, it has in fact imposed a duty on the police to provide security, adequate security, to those who may want to protest. And I'm talking of Section 83, Subsection 4 of the Police Act 2020. Under that provision of the law, the police must secure the life and liberty of protesters. So what are your thoughts about Saturday's protests, the role of protesters, government, and the police? Go to our Twitter handle at Just Nigeria TV to leave your comments. We'll be glad to read from you.